The vibrant tropical rainforests of Central South America are a diverse environment home to countless extraordinary plant and animal species. However, despite the visible abundance of the forest canopy, the soil beneath the trees is often severely depleted of organic matter. As a consequence of the constant rainfall and heat typical of tropical forests, fallen plant matter decomposes quickly, and nutrients from the decomposing plant matter are recycled back into new living plants. Many plants in tropical rainforests have shallow, broad root systems, an adaptation that allows them to quickly capture any available minerals. In addition, the compacted clay soils prevalent in many tropical rainforest regions do not retain nutrients and minerals very well, and due to heavy rainfall, most of these nutrients are washed away, rather than remaining in the soil. In spite of this setback, pre-Columbian civilizations in the Amazon basin established complex societies based on agriculture and cultivated various crops that normally could not grow in the depleted rainforest soils. By incompletely burning wood, brush, or plant material left over from farming and then incorporating the results into the clay, the Amazonians created what is today known as biochar, a soil amendment that drastically improves the overall health of the soil and thereby increases its agricultural output. Evidence of biochar production dates back more than 10,000 years. Shards of pottery and leftovers of food found throughout biochar-enriched soil indicate that humans were responsible for the composition of the soil rather than factors such as wildfires. Initially, biochar was likely an unintended byproduct of slash-and-burn methods used to clear land for farming and settlement, but as its agricultural benefits became clear, biochar production for purposeful soil improvement became common in South America. The use of biochar to boost the productivity of agricultural land has also been historically documented in ancient Europe and Asia, albeit to a lesser extent than in South America. With the tremendous improvement in soil quality resulting from biochar use, native settlements in South America were home to millions of people. Early Portuguese and Spanish explorers who wandered into the Amazon rainforest knew of the existence and effects of biochar, and sometimes referred to it as Amazonian Black Earth. In 1542, an expedition led by Spanish explorer Francisco de Oriana traveled from modern-day Ecuador through the South American interior, encountering numerous indigenous tribes along his route. He documented that native inhabitants of the Amazon basin lived primarily in areas where the soil was much darker than usual of the tropical surroundings, and remarked that this difference in soil quality could be attributed to systematic management by the native people. However, scientific inquiry into how this seemingly magical soil not only supported resource-intensive crops, but could also produce crops for decades without fertilizers, began in earnest only in the 20th century. With a growing body of research, biochar has shown to have immense potential for soil remediation and agriculture. The building blocks of living plant matter are composed of carbon-based molecules, such as cellulose and lignin. These molecules provide support to plant cells and organize them into complex structures that facilitate the movement of essential water, gases, and nutrients within the plant. When plant matter is burned under low oxygen conditions, the water, gases, and many organic compounds are removed, leaving behind a highly porous material consisting primarily of carbon, charcoal. If burned properly, a single gram of charcoal can have a surface area of hundreds of square meters. Compared to the slash-and-burn method used to produce ash for short-term soil improvement, the production of charcoal releases less of the carbon stored in plant matter. Instead, that carbon is locked away in a form not easily broken down by the living creatures that feed on decomposing plant matter. On its own, charcoal is a detrimental soil amendment and can decrease the agricultural output of soil in the short term. However, when mixed into the earth alongside other beneficial factors, as was done in the Amazonian cultures for thousands of years, 
charcoal gradually transforms into a living component of soil. The amazing properties of biochar arise from several physical, chemical, and biological characteristics. The porosity of biochar allows it to absorb and store water and nutrients much better than the clay soils of the Amazon. It also breaks up hard, compact dirt, allowing air to travel throughout the soil and ensuring that plant roots can breathe. The surface of biochar has a slight electrostatic charge, helping biochar absorb ions. These ions can contain the elements nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, necessary in large quantities for proper plant growth, as well as elements that plants only need in trace amounts, including sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. As a result of its water and nutrient-rich environment, bacteria and fungi readily colonize biochar. These microorganisms are able to speed up decomposition of dead plant matter, make the nutrients more readily available to plants, suppress plant diseases, improve salt and drought tolerance, and stimulate plant growth. Over hundreds of years, fungi and bacteria break down the biochar and help incorporate valuable carbon into the soil. These qualities of biochar provide an ideal environment for plants to thrive in successive generations with minimal fertilizer supplementation. As the world's population and resulting demand for food increases, modern agricultural practices are becoming less and less sustainable. In many cases, long-term environmental well-being is neglected in favor of short-term productivity gains spurred by synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, and seasonal soil use. Biochar could replace the use of synthetic fertilizers, mitigate the environmental impact of modern agricultural practices, and provide additional benefits to soil health and productivity. Agricultural land in temperate regions of the world is generally not cultivated outside of its growing season. During this time, the exposed soil loses valuable bacteria and fungi, which decreases the soil's ability to retain and cycle nutrients. By applying biochar into the soil, these beneficial bacterial and fungal systems would be shielded from the elements. Biochar application to soil would increase retention of both synthetic and natural fertilizers. This would not only increase crop yields, but also limit the flow of fertilizers into rivers and eventually oceans, where excess nitrogen and phosphorus cause toxic algal blooms. In a similar manner, biochar could reduce the runoff of pesticides and herbicides into waterways. Biochar additionally has the potential to remediate low-quality or damaged soils that are low in organic matter content to improve the health of wild ecosystems. Extreme weather events have degraded soil quality throughout the world, making previously vegetated land inhospitable for the plants and animals that once prospered there. Biochar could serve as a buffer against quickly changing conditions by absorbing and storing water, nutrients, and microorganisms, maintaining good soil structure to limit erosion, and supporting the growth of pioneer species after extreme events. One such example, a proposed use of standing deadwood in the western United States, would transform a fraction of the millions of dead trees in the region into biochar and return this into the soil. This would return carbon to the soil instead of into the atmosphere, make an ideal environment for new plant growth, and significantly limit the danger of wildfires. By incubating biochar with compost and natural fertilizers before incorporating it into the soil, the critical contribution of microbial and fungal communities in sustaining thriving ecosystems can be restored to environments damaged by fire, floods, or human activity. As promising as biochar seems, its application does have uncertainties, drawbacks, and negative side effects, and thus should be carefully controlled and implemented. While biochar can have tremendous positive effects on soil in tropical regions, its effect on fertile soils with high organic matter content is much less impressive. Nevertheless, Small-scale farms across the world have utilized biochar for growing everything from herbs to fruit trees to varying results, 
with many plants benefiting greatly from biochar and others being negatively affected. Some of the negative effects of biochar may be due to its ability to sequester nitrogen if applied without being premixed with compost, as well as its ability to shift soil alkalinity. Thus, if biochar is used for ecosystem restoration, it might affect the species of plants that colonize an area in the short term by temporarily decreasing nitrogen availability. Biochar can also affect the plant species in an area over the long term, as many ecosystems have evolved without the presence and effects of biochar, and consequently would have to adapt to biochar in the soil. Ongoing investigations into biochar for agriculture are showing promising results, and biochar may soon revolutionize agriculture and environmental restoration. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on the channel to keep learning more about biology, chemistry, physics, history, and many more topics.